Nolan, uh, open-ended question. How, uh, what, what is this defense like being on it when you got guys like yourself who came in, were very highly recruited, then you've got some other guys who waited their turn and fifth year seniors. You've got Dan Jackson, who was a walk on. It's, it's an interesting mix of guys on this defense. You know, you say that, but I say, um, I guess all we have is connection. You know, that's what we focus on during the off season. I mean, connecting, you know, I, I always say everyone put their pants on one leg at a time, no matter if you're a five-star walk-on, if you love the game and willing to put in the work at Georgia, you know, you'll find yourself on the field. At Nolan, we, we just uh, talked to Channing Tindall, and, uh, you know, I don't know if he's that upbeat and gregarious all the time in the locker room, just uh, cutting up and laughing. He said that you were uh, – you were vocal and talking and yelling all the time, which I actually never really knew about you. But can you talk a little bit about his uh, personality and, and and tell me whether he's telling the truth about yours, that you're kind of a vocal leader and kind of yelling at everybody all the time? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say myself as a vocal leader, but I just to say myself as I have a lot of energy. So I want people to match me, you know. God didn't have to wake you up every morning to do whatever you have to do. So I'll take it as an opportunity. I just get to wake up and play football and go to class. You know, some people don't get to wake up at all. So I just feel like I try to transfer that energy over to people. You know, we always say match me. So if I'm with my partner bad, having a bad day, I always look at him and tell him, hey, man, come on, we good. We keep going. We keep pushing. You know, match me. We're going to be fine. You know, the worst is yet to come. And what about Channing? Do you see that in him? Is, is he that? How's he in the locker room? Yeah, I 100% say our whole defense has gotten like that through the connection piece. You know, we did those skull sessions, and I think 100% the biggest thing was connecting. You know, once you get connection and understand someone else's why, you can push them a little bit more to go a little bit further, you know, to do an extra rep, to keep going, to keep pushing. Put Anthony Dasher and then Mark Weiser. Hey, Nolan, good to see you, man. Um, yeah, good, man. Look, I know it was, uh, obviously it was a team effort as far as the defense, uh, you know, was concerned the other night, but, but for you personally, why was it important for you to kind of chip in and get that first sack of the year, uh, right away, right out the gate like that? I wouldn't say it was personal whatsoever. I was just wanted to do it for my brothers, you know, and then we got the rest of them came, you know, I was just happy as for mine as the first one. I was more happy for Nicobe's because, you know, we put a lot of stuff to do those pressures right. And when they hit, you know, it's just really exciting, you know, that everyone did their job for the pressure to hit. So, you know, not just for myself, not the one sack, but for all six of them, you know, you get really excited because they're not easy to come by and they're not easy to get. Thanks, man. Dylan, do you think given the talent level that is on this defense and the, the amount of pass rushers that they kind of showed off the other day what you could do, that this could be kind of an almost every game type deal in terms of, you know, getting after the quarterback like you all did? And we, we take it one week at a time, and we worry about the team that's in front of us. We don't worry about anything at, in the head of us. So we usually try to take and see what tendencies that each team does because everyone does different things on third down. You know, some every week you can't just go out there and pin your ears back, rush the pass, you know. Some weeks you get in the third and short situations, you got to play the run, especially in SEC. So we're not thinking of just pass rush, pass rush, because – you know, third and short, third and two, third and three, even third and five. You know, most most SEC teams, they're not going to try to pass the ball. They're going to try to run and get that five because they believe in their own line. Let's go to Catherine and then Jake. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you how you feel about some of Georgia's newer receivers. How are they meshing being in a, a new place and working with a new team so far? Yeah, as far as the offensive side of the ball, you know, I, I trust Coach Munkin and the coaches that, you know, I just see them every day at practice and they look really good. I mean, they're flying down the field. They're doing everything they're supposed to do. And I just don't think our freshmen, they're not freshmen wide receivers. I think they had enough for them during camp. Coach Smart put them in that environment and stuff like that. And I trust our coaches and their preparation that they're ready. Nolan, uh, how do you, this might be a tough question to ask, but how do you balance – you know, looking at the results enough that, that you gain confidence from them, but also looking at the standard enough that you you know you've got to get better. Is, is there a balance there? How do you guys handle that? We, as we say every day, we set the standard. You know, we are the standard. And 
it's not a getting too high, getting your letting your highs get too high, letting your lows get too low. It's about being even kill and you know, just being able to, you know, at Monday we come in, we call it looking at the doctor. You know, every time you go to the doctor, you know, you do have things wrong and you do do good things, but you usually focus on the things wrong that you can do better at. And, you know, so other teams don't take those those problems that you had and then, you know, copycat or do more things with them. Let's go to Palmer and then Jed. Yeah, Nolan, in a game like this, how important is it for some of those young guys to get an opportunity? And, and based on, you know, what you've seen from the scout team offense, the guys that you're going up against, who's really stood out to you as, as young guys that have impressed? I mean, a lot of the young guys, all of them are working hard. I mean, even the ones on scout team, I mean, it's just the whole, I say the whole 11. I mean, they put in their work every day just like we put in our work. And I just say a lot of the guys on the scout team, I say the whole scout team has gotten better and given a good look. And even Brock, Brock Bowers is giving us a look every day that almost replicates the JT look that we got just a few minutes ago when JT was on scout team. And, you know, we getting a really good look and that's something that makes the defense really better. And then how important is it for guys to get into a, to a game like this? Uh, what did you say? Just how important is it for those young guys to gain oper- gain experience in a game like this? I mean, it's really important, you know, for, for everyone, you know, get their, I would say, get their feet wet or, you know, get those jitters, first jitters out in the game. And it's really good that hopefully they have opportunity. Hey, Nolan, um, with Keely Ringo, just one, what did you think of how he played the other night? You know, his first I guess, big taste of game action. And two, you know, at this point for him is – is the main thing that he needs to do to get better is just finally get out there and get those game reps against, you know, top competition? I, I 100% say no. That's not one thing that Keaton Reno needs to do because it's not like we don't have, you know, George Pickens or guys at Georgia every day that's working him. So I just feel like, you know, I think he's doing an amazing job personally. And I just think, you know, we keep him composed and we keep him feeling good and, you know, just making him believe like, you're not the only one out there. You know, you, you don't have to make every play yourself. You know, there's 10 guys that's playing around you, and no matter what, we fly to the ball and we all play together. That's the other connection part that comes into it. And as a quick follow-up to that, you know, Channing said that sometimes during his injury rehab process, he would get down sometimes and he was kind of up and down. What, what did y'all say to him during those times to let him know that, you know, to just get him through that adversity? Yeah, I, just like I said earlier, I tell everyone straight up, God didn't have to wake you up today. You know, so if you're feeling down, you know, you need to figure out a way to get yourself up or lean on somebody. Because I always tell them, lean on me. I say, lean on folk. So, because I'm always trying to pick you up. Let's go to Connor and then Davis. You know, I'm sure you've matched up against Broderick Jones a number of times in practice. How has he developed this offseason? Where is he sort of heading into week two now? I mean, Broderick is getting – since Broderick first came here, he was really good to me. I'm just being honest. And, and it's just it's just hitting extra levels now. I mean, he's going against, you know, me and Adam every day, Chaz, Chambliss, MJ Sherman. So he's going against good pass rushers. And he's only getting better and better. And even at the run block, he's getting better and better. Nolan, in your mind, what makes Dan Lanning so successful as both a coach and a play caller? Um, proof is in the pudding. I don't know how. I don't know how to say that. I mean, he's a great coach, great play caller. You know, there's some of those things that you just can't talk about. All right, we've got time for a couple of follow-up questions. If anybody has one, just jump right in. No, and you mentioned it there when you were talking about Chaz and, and some of the guys in your own group. Uh, who's really stood out to you among those young guys? And, and I guess like what what makes them special and in, in Chaz and um, Xavier and Sori. Uh, Chaz, MJ, and Xavier, the thing that makes them special is they, they embrace, you know, we call ourselves the pack, the wolf pack. And once you embrace the pack, you know, it's a lot of work that comes with it. You know, we, we play four down, three down. We carry the back, carry James Cook, carry Zamir White. You know, you got to match up and run with those guys, but you also got to strike big guys like Broderick. It's just a lot of things that, you know, you take on and being an outside linebacker at the University of Georgia, and I feel like that they stepped up to the challenge 100%, and they, they're not afraid to answer questions in meetings and just knowing the scheme and just being more comfortable, you know, is a big thing. And I think all three of them have accomplished that.